You know, you gotta put the kids to work, right? Well, well, we're going to give the worship team another hand of praise. My son on his first time to be on Bongos. And the little man, I don't forgot his name. Hey, our son. Isaiah. Isaiah on the guitar. I think they were the best two up there. Yes. <laughs> if you'll turn to your Bibles to Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. We're going to start here, but there's something I want to bring out later on in Acts, but... I, I feel like for, for, I need a foundation that will probably bring you to me. Yeah. So, so I want to give you some background of what I feel is what we need to battle, what I'm fixing to talk about, and then we'll give you the depth of exactly how we're going to battle it. And it happens to every church that starts to grow. I promise you, now I'm going to talk to your pastor a couple weeks ago. I told her it was a double in size. I just talked to her son, and she said it already has. <laughs> so... Ephesians chapter 10, it says, Finally, brethren, be strong. You want me to stand for the reading of God's word? Go ahead. Just to honor God. Some people do it, some people don't. I just thought we need to do it today. Ephesians chapter 6, starting with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, yeah. that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual witnesses in high places. If you'll just bow your hands while I pray, I can never do nothing myself. This flesh is just flesh. But I ask, pray and I ask God to come in here right now and ask if he can preach to you because I have nothing to do with it. It's all him. Lord God, I come to you as your humble servant, Lord. Lord God, I thank you for this divine appointment that you have gave me. Lord God, I ask you to come upon me right now with your Holy Spirit and anointing power that you have put in my ministry. Lord God, I ask you to touch me like you've never touched me before, Lord God. And anything I say, that I go out void, Lord God. Let it be as you're speaking, Jesus. Let it be as you're ministering, Jesus. Let it be as you're laying on hands, Jesus. Lord God, I thank you and I, and I just worship you, oh God. And we thank you, and in, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And as we see here, we have to have a whole armor of God. Yes. And, and, and there's sometimes in a battle, if you ever watched a war movie, some, there's a nick in the armor sometimes. Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about, a nick in the armor today. I don't, if it wasn't want to, you can go to Acts chapter 16, verses 6, 16 through 18. And it come to pass as we went to pray, a certain desperate possessed with a spirit of divination, or also known as the Python spirit, which that's what we're going to talk about, met us with brought her master's much gain by Sue, saying, The men followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which yes. they shew us under the weight of salvation, which was the truth. But I explained to you why she said the truth in a minute. And did the same day, many Paul being grieved, and turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in thy name of Jesus to come out of her and come out the same hour. The thing about the Python spirit, or the spirit in this lady, is it takes part of the truth to get the ones that are already disbelievers. Yeah. So if she can go and she says, these are the ones that show you the way to salvation, the people that are not of God or even are teetering in God will start to think, hey, wait a minute. That may be truth in what she's saying. Maybe they start calling her. Maybe I need to start calling Cleo, or one of the other psychics, which are all of the devil. They're all witchcraft. Yeah. And so if, 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 if there's a nick in our armor, and that's what I'm saying, if there's a nick in our armor as a like Christian, a walker in God, the Python spirit will bite you, and then it will start twisting and turning and converting around you to the point of when it'll get you to attach. And then when you take another breath, it's going to squeeze some more. Then when you take another breath, it's going to squeeze some more to the point that you don't feel like you need to even exist. To the point where everything in your life is overwhelming you. As a Christian, you don't feel like you can get up and go to church no more. You don't feel like you can worship no more. Yeah. I'm telling you, this pot of spirit is yeah. not after yeah. these sinners. It's after the believers yeah. to make them sinners. And I'm telling you, if you do not get this pot of spirit out of this church, it will never grow anymore. Right. And God told me to expose it today, Pastor. And I'm exposing the pot of spirit. And today, we cut the head of the pot on off. Amen. And I'm going to tell you all how to do that. And then you're going to start seeing more miracles like more in this church. Yes. You're going to start seeing cancer healed in this church. You're going to start seeing blind eyes open in this church. You're going to start seeing people born here. Now, some of them may stay. 
Some of them they go. And now you gotta understand a, 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 a living, breathing, growing church is like a lung. It inhales people and it exhales what it don't need. Yeah. It inhales and keeps the ones that need for this ministry, then it exhales. So when you see the church go big, small, don't get discouraged. You get discouraged when you see it dwelling and not going bigger or smaller. That means the Holy Spirit has a part which is in your And that does not happen in this church. I'm telling you, this, the anointing is here. It was here that Saturday night. I was here with my pastor. It's here already. Yes. I know one reason because I can actually breathe right now. Yes. Because yes. my sinuses are really bad. But once I walked into this church, they started to dry up. Yes. That means there's anointing in this church. Yes. I didn't have to ask God. He just did it. Yes. 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 Amen. And, and, and the power of the Spirit just starts suffocating you. And it can be simple things like, for instance, somebody hurt you a long time ago. It, the power of the Spirit likes to use the past to bring up to yeah. get you depressed. Yeah. And I'm telling you, there's a nick in your armor. Yeah. The power of the Spirit, which is the devil, the same one that got into Eve, got to Eve and got to eat the apple, the same one that we talked about with Samson, he ended up telling the woman what he should have told her. It was none of her business to know he had that his strength was in his hair. If he had kept his mouth shut, he'd still have his strength. Yes, yes. Amen. But that's a nick in his armor. We cannot have a nick in our armor as men and women of God. Yes, amen. How do I fix the nick in the armor, Brother Robert? I'm telling you how you fix it. First, you've got to worship. Yes, amen. First, you've got to worship. Amen. Then you've got to pray. Yes. Then you've got to intercede. But the only thing you've got to remember when you're doing this, the power of God's Spirit will be yes. right on your back. Because this is where it stays. It stays with the worshipers. It stays with the seers. It stays with the Christians. It stays with the ones that are trying to walk the true walk, not the false walk. It don't need you if you're out in the world. It's done with you. It needs you when you're laying hands on people. I don't need to lay hands on you. You can raise hands to God and kill me. You have that same power. Yeah, I'm a man of God. Yeah, I'm a Lord. Stirs up the 
connects itself to church members, as well as the community, cities, and state. If you have ambition, make sure your ambition is in the right track of what God wants you to do. Yes, amen. If you have selfish ambition, that positive spirit will attack you, give you everything to lift you up, and God will be left out. Yes. And then, then you get to the point where you'll be suffocated. Greed is something else that attaches to. Yes. Oh, ladies, y'all ain't what I'm about to say. And men too, because y'all are just as guilty as this is women. Gossip. <laughs> it attaches to gossip. Yes. I'm telling you, if pastors up here, or little ones up here, or any other ones up here, you better not talk about them. Because right. the Bible says, touch not the anointed, and do no prophets no harm. Yes, amen. amen. You better lift them up and edify them. Yes, amen. Because they're your leaders. They go through battles that you do not see. Yes, amen. They pray and they fast, and you do not see it. Amen. amen. They, they battle battles every time they pray for you. Every time they cast out your demons. Every time they pray for you, your sickness. They battle that night. I yes. promise you they battle. Yes. Yes. When I get through praying for y'all, I will battle tonight. I pray we're not going to bed at all. Yes. But that's okay. You're healed. Amen. Yes. God's put me big shoes on, Leroy. Yes. I ain't scared of the devil no more. I tell him, come on. There's a song by like Carter that says, Devil's got to run. You know what? I got three of my good, and he's got to run. I got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he's got to run for me now. I'm not scared of him no more. He's had me depressed. He's had me almost lose my wife. He's had me almost lose my kids. I was in retail. I put my keys and walked out of retail. And ever since then, God started flipping everything around. Amen. Amen. He told me one day, he goes, how can you be a minister if you're never in church? Yeah. I said, God, I'll walk out. He said, well, I told you to do that four years ago. <laughs> but God, it's the money. Yeah. The pop of spirit had a hold of me. Yeah. I was suffocating. Yeah. I was feeling that like there was no hope. I was about to lose my wife. I was about to lose my kids. You'd think when I lost a little baby, that would have woke me up. I accepted the call, but I strained a bit. Not that I didn't believe in God, but I strained the walk. There's a walk that we got to walk as a Christian. And adults, you have kids that are watching you. Brothers and sisters, you have kids that are watching you. Uncles and aunts, they watch you. They see you suffer. They see you cry. But they don't ever see you pray. Yeah, I'm quiet now. Amen. Amen. Rebellion, ungodly authority and control. Papa Spirit will attach on that in a heartbeat. Slander, liars, and this one right here, Amen. manipulation. Yes. Oh, yeah. You start manipulating people, that's a nick in your armor, and he will bite you, and he will attach you, and he'll make you suffocate. Yes. Yes. Amen. See, because I know I got to breathe. And I said this in Sunday school, is because Uruk means the breath of God. Yeah. The Holy Spirit breathed in me life when I was yet in the womb. And if I cannot breathe, then I cannot be attached to the Holy Spirit. The ministry that, that I have started, my pastor knows, is I Thirst Ministries. And the reason, y'all remember that, I preached about that, and that's what God told me. I thirsted because I feel like on my cross that day, God gave me a revelation when he said, I thirst. He wasn't thirsting for no water. Amen. But he was thirsting because he was not connected to God at that point in the because he had to die sin. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And that's how this world is. They're disconnected from God. And that's what the Python Spirit wants to do. It wants to disconnect you from God. Yeah. It is a Come slow, on. conniving Spirit, it's not something that's going to come and attack you and you're going to die, but it's going to attach to you sneaky. Before yeah. you even know it, it's going to be wrapped right around you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And you, and you will start to let heart breathe and, and, and things. But you know what? There's, there's always hope. Yes. Y'all ready for some weapons against it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all ready for some weapons against it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Prayer, especially at night. Yeah. The devil does not like you to pray and thank God before yeah. you lay down. Yes. Amen. I don't mean pray for things. I mean just Thank you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you for what he yes. brought you through that day. Yes. Thank you for where he's taking you tomorrow. Yes. For tomorrow's not guaranteed, only yes. today. Yes. And I'm telling you today that if you pray and you make it at least 15 minutes a day, God's going to start you with putting them in your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 If you pray and you take time with God, whether it's prayer, whether it's fasting, I challenge you to buy both. Yes. And pray. And God's going to start doing something new, not just in your life, but in your church. Yes, amen. He's already started with 180 ministries. Yes. He's going to start doing new things. Let's see what's going to happen. Worship. I know I can't sing. God did not give me that talent, Leroy. I barely can play the drums. But guess what? God gave me the talent. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's what I told Brother Jason over here. I said, look, I play drums so I sound better. 
Resist the devil and he will flee. Yes. When that person comes to you, young kids, hey, try this little weed. You better resist. He's trying to get you to nick in your armor. Yep. Hey, let's have unmarital sex. He's trying to get a nick in your armor. Yes. Hey, skip church and go meet the mall. He's trying to get a nick in your armor, kids. Yes. And adults, you too. Yes. Yes. He's trying to get a nick. All he needs is a little nick and a little entrance to slither his way in. Oh, yeah. yes. Come on. Guess what? I got some power. Yes. I got some power in the name of Jesus. I got some authority in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Man, I tell you to rise up, just like that sermon said, for me and my house will serve the Lord. Yeah. If you don't start being men in the house and control and, and, and guiding them in the right way, you're not doing the right thing in you as a husband. Amen. Yes, my wife talks about her being the boss. Most all girl women do. But she knows when I put my foot down and it rise up right with the Bible. She knows that's what we have to do. That's a whole other summer, another day. I'm going to stay on the focus. Y'all didn't invite me back to hear that one. <laughs> the pop up spirit manifests and manipulates perversion of authority, of fears, and control of money, and attempt to apply pressure to apostolic, prophetic. What do we have here? We have apostolic and prophetic ministry. Yes. It is going to try to attack your ministry, Pastor Susan. Yeah. It probably already has. I really believe that's why you went to prayer and fasting and got on Facebook just to concentrate on God. You felt the, the, the squeeze. Yeah. And not just probably her, but each and one of y'all is going to start feeling yes, it. God. But guess what? It's gone today. Yeah. Unless you make a nick in your armor, yeah. it's going to be gone today. Yeah. Amen. And as Leroy can tell you, the ministry I'm under, if I say it, I believe it, don't a Leroy. Yeah. While those spirits try to pressure and squeeze and push out your life giving, mm-hmm. which means it tries to push out your breath. But as long as you stay in the, 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 the keys and the prayer and the fasting and the worship and the trusting in God, then you have a chance. Yes. But as soon as you give into that old nasty world, as soon as he gets a hold of you and squeezes the life out of it, he's going to lay you down there on the floor and go to the next person. He's coming with you. But guess what? My Jesus ain't going. When he takes me, he's not done with me. When he takes me under his wing, he is not done with me. Amen. He is not done with me to the point of the next step, I go. For I thirst for the next step. And the thing that God told me, any church I go to, when we go into the next level of ministry, when we go into the next level of organization for that ministry, I believe that with all my heart. I am invited to Baptist churches. I am invited to the Holiness churches. I am invited to the Black churches, the White churches. I'm waiting for an ancient and East church next. Amen. <laughs> but I'm invited because that's what God has done. He wants me to connect all these churches together right. because there's one goal and it's to save souls. Yeah. Yeah. But if y'all are suffering, I can't. Have, I can't get y'all to save souls. Yeah. If y'all are suffering, you can't do God's kingdom work. Apostolic to stop the move of God in a religious or python. Spirit tries to pressure, squeeze, and push out the life giving. Apostolic ministry to move a stop a move of God in a region or a city. Amen. What are you trying to do with 180 ministries? A move of God, right? Yes. I told you I had something for you, didn't I? He's going to pressure you and he's going to try to get a nick in your armor, brother. But when I saw that on Facebook, God spoke to me and said, it's going to flourish. Tell the pastor, says the same thing. It's going to flourish. Yeah, yes. Her ministry is going to flourish. Amen. Yes. It is, it is already done. Well, we, I'm worried that we had this already done. Our pastor was here. Amen. God is amazing. Yes. But we got to let him be amazing. Amen. Yes. Amen. Another thing about Pastor Spirit, when we get in the way of ourselves, he will attach to us. Yes. Amen. Believe it. I told my wife, I said, I've never preached this sermon before. I was hoping that I get to preach about the road to Damascus. <laughs> or, or, or the dying of the cross and rising on the third day, the day of Pentecost. Something I'm used to. And God said, no, preach with the Python spirit. They need it. They need to be released. So today, the release. 
And if you still have a stronghold right now, I'm going to read one more and tell you one more thing. We're going to do something. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. The pastor, this is to you. God told me to tell you this. Acts chapter, Exodus, not, not 9, verse 1. When God tells Moses to let his people go, don't you say the same thing? Devil, let my people go. Three times. Devil, let my people go. 